Okay, welcome back to Tiplo TV. Thank you for joining the Average Golfer. I am here at Four Golf Chester and I'm here for a long day, a long day of driver testing. And at the end of it all, I'm gonna come up with my top five drivers from 2018. This all comes on the back of the recent release from Titleist, the TS2 and a TS3 models loads of hype around those clubs but i'm going to pitch them all up against one another today and at the end of this week i'll come up with my top five drivers for 2018. Okay, so let's get this whole thing underway with the TS3 versus the M3. Now then, both of these heads are 9.5 loft and they're both gonna have the exact same shaft in them. And that's the tensile blue, 55 gram, and it's a stiff shaft. So there's gonna be nothing to separate these two in terms of their setup. And it really is gonna be a true head to head. Now the difference between uh, my TS3 numbers today and those of last week. If there are any differences, we're going to be looking at the GC2 from Foresight Sports. The first time that I've started to use this in the driver testing. So it'll be interesting to see what numbers there are and if there are any variables at all from the testing that I've done over the last 12 months, which has been using Trackman. But they will both be on GC2. They will both have the same shaft. Like I said, nothing to separate them. Stop waffling and let's get into some golf balls. I want to talk very briefly about how they look in terms of head to head and i think these are two quite different looking golf clubs and very different on the eye and i think it's very much down to the individual taylor made have stuck to this look by where they've got this sort of carbon crown this carbon imprint which i love the look of we've got some of the uh blue and white and red prints around the back which again is very slick looking golf club and they've got this thick band of silver this time round on the m3 and m4 models that's right across the club face uh, when I say club face, on the top of the club, that is, sorry. The TS3 is very much your classic looking teardrop in shape, high gloss finish, a lot more simplistic. They've both pleasing to the eye in different ways. I think for me, I'm still always drawn towards the classic look of the stripped back plain crown from the TS3, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, but that's very much an individual thing. The only other thing I'm gonna mention in terms of this head to head is the difference in sound between the two. I've obtained the data on the TS3 earlier today. I'm now going to do it with the M3 and we'll see what the differences are. This is going to be a real interesting one. Let's put that down. And let's talk about, before I switch off the camera and uh, obtain a good sample of shots, I'm just going to talk about the sound of the M3. Sits really nice behind the ball. I think um, I'd have no problems in gaming this club. Now I smile because of the sound, because for me, with driver, when you talk about feel, the only thing you can really talk about is sound. And I'll hit one more ball, but there's quite a different sound on this M3. Right, sound really loud um, if I said slightly hollow I'm not a lover of the sound on it if I'm perfectly honest with you uh, it's a little bit hard on the face for me but and I say hard on the face and that's the what I'm resonating in terms of feel from sound but yeah it's not the best sounding golf club and therefore not the best feeling golf club for me but we're not here to talk about feel we're not here to talk about looks we're here to talk about performance. So I'll carry on hitting some golf balls. We'll sit back down and we'll talk head to head the numbers between the TS3 and the M3 from TaylorMade. Right, okay, so I don't think you need to see sit and watch me hit golf balls down the range. So I've cut it very short and let's get straight stuck into numbers this week. Uh, one thing to mention at this point is that I mentioned that I've moved to GC2 in terms of the data and I've done that for two reasons. Uh, one being it's the same data that you see from the majority of the testers that are out there. And the second reason being is because a lot of you have missed, and I have as well, the visual, the graphic, as far as being able to see the ball going out in terms of ball flight out into a uh, into a driving range, which is something that um, I wasn't able to sort out for today, but it will be coming shortly in future videos. We'll get that content back in. Um, anyway, 
let's get stuck into these numbers because this is a real interesting one for me. It is, don't forget, it's, it's the same loft in terms of the club heads. It's exactly the same shaft. So we're gonna be looking at, for me, this is a real head to head in terms of what are the differences? How does performance differ between the two, if at all? I had a lot of shots over, effectively this went over to two days in the end. Six drivers tested, a um, lot of breaks in between to re-energize. Um, let's throw the numbers, I'm gonna put, I've got them on paper in front of me here to read from, but let's throw the numbers first of all, starting with the TaylorMade M3, and we'll go into the drive ball data. Um, so, 145 ball speed, 14.5 launch, these are the averages I'm reading from, 2578 spin, peaking at 35 on average and a 243 carry. Bearing in mind on the carry, let's uh, so there's a 234, a 236 and a 238 in there. However, those three drives are very much, and those distances front to back are very much dependent on strike and they're very much dependent on much more like what an average golfer would do and what I do every week when I go out, which is some good, some bad. I think, again, a point to mention is that for me, my optimum has been over the last 12 months has been anything between 240 and 250 carry is about as good as it gets from me in terms of the drivers that I've tested with a spin around 22 and this launch angle of 14 to 15 degrees. That would be my numbers. Um, I'm gonna throw next to the dispersion chart on the M3. Where did all those balls finish? And for me, I'd be reasonably comfortable with that. I don't bang the ball down the middle one after the other. That's on different channels, I'm afraid. I spray it about a bit because that's what I do. Like I said, that's what most average golfers do most weekends. And with driver, I'm certainly not the best driver in the world by a long way. But that group in there, I'm reasonably happy with. A few left, a few right. Maybe finding the first cut if I'm lucky. Uh, and a few down the middle. Um, but overall, with the M3 numbers, I'm reasonably keen... I'm reasonably happy with what I achieved for the for the data, for the purpose of this head-to-head. -head. Struck the ball reasonably well, swing the ball, swing the club quite decent for me. And like I said, right up there in terms of ball speed, distances of where I would expect it to be. So I moved on to the TS3. Now I tested the TS3 a few weeks ago. Spent a lot of time getting the shaft right, and that's the important thing. But in the, in the video itself that I did with the guy from Titleist, spent a lot of the video getting to the right shaft and by the time we got to it uh, and I was comfortable with it when we started hitting balls and collecting some data uh, I was okay with it it performed very very well again it was over that sort of 240 odd carry distance which like I said is my sort of um, my optimal um, but I wasn't blown away by it let's say but I've come back to it I hit it again um, a week or so ago and I had to say it looked I wasn't collecting data, it looked very, very good in what I was achieving. So getting it back in today was good, straight into the same setup, same shaft that I'd used. I was very comfortable from the get-go and I was starting to give these a little bit of a wall. Now, I'm going to throw the dry ball data up now. Um, for, so I'll read off the averages as I did. 146 ball speed, 14.8 um, launch. Uh, what have we got? 1.8 spin, 32 peak height and 256 in terms of overall distance in terms of the average and I think average is a key point because if you look through that list of average carries I don't think I've ever achieved anything like that in terms of a video on YouTube with driver in hand since I started two years ago. Phenomenal in terms of the distance and balls 262, 261, 259 this is that's seriously I mean that's not numbers that I'm used to achieving well, I'll mention one thing, the numbers are, these are about 12 yards on average longer than I was achieving last week in the test with, uh, when I at first got to swing in the club with tightness with this shaft. Um, I think you could put a couple of logics behind that, is one, I was uh, I was straight into this shaft, we hadn't been playing for an hour or so before I'm messing around, I was straight into this shaft from the get-go, comfortable with it, maybe not Fraser and the other guy from tightness sort of standing around you a little bit freer to, to give this thing a bit of a wallop. The other potential thing to consider is I was recording the data on Trackman. This was on GC2. Are there any variables between the two? I don't know as yet. I've not put them head to head. So there are things to bear in mind between this review and the initial review of the TS3. However, it's also important to remember that today's test, and the only thing that really matters is both drivers were tested on exactly the same setup and machine. This is the bit that slightly concerns me with the TS3. The whatever is six seven balls to right of target 
more than happy with um apart from the one that leaked off way right but there's a group in there that is very very good indeed for me all in around the same area it's what is it six balls very very closely packed very good indeed it's a small group of data maybe we need you know you need 50 shots really to analyze that dispersion a little bit better but it would be slight concern i think dispersion on the balls that i hit was better from the m3 distance was a lot longer on the ts3 um and it's a real tough one this i, I think it's for me if i was choosing between these two clubs money wasn't an object i was like i said i wouldn't swap from an m3 to the ts3 if i purchase the m3 i'd be more than happy with those numbers but i always view these things on purely of if i'm if two clubs are available and i've got the choice to pick from one or the other then i would select ts3 i think this setup is really really interesting i'm going to do more testing with it and see if i can get a little bit more consistency out of it personally because the way it performed there was very very good indeed and those numbers are really really impressive what I like you to do is simple, go through that data. There's a lot of people who get involved in the comments that are very educated within um, golf club technology. And have a look at those numbers and just explain to me what the difference is. Why have we got such a big difference there from the um, TS3 to the M3? Similar ball speed, if you look at those averages, similar ball speed, similar launch angles, difference in spin, difference in peak heights but huge difference in overall carry distance that is don't forget so interesting one for you to all have a look at and contemplate hope you enjoyed the video i'm trying to make it a little bit short and sweet in terms of what you see out there and just get straight stuck into these numbers for the head to heads i've got loads of these coming this week um probably if i can get them done in time there'll be one every day from now on in um and i'm going to have a look at all the major drivers like i said have been tested and we'll see which one comes out on top but for now it's TS3 that leads the way and uh, like, comment, dislike, do whatever it is you feel like and uh, I'll see you soon.